Thank you, Gretchen. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy today to join you to share how investing in SAR capabilities, crew training, and global standards made the largest ever helicopter rescue at sea possible and share some of the lessons learned we learned from this extraordinary operation. But first, a bit of background. CHC has been providing search and rescue services for more than 50 years in challenging environments from remote, perilous, and extreme uh, terrains to offshore rescues and the towering swells of the Atlantic Ocean um, and to the cyclone-prone tropical waters of the Timor Sea, as well as the Indian Ocean and the Caspian Sea, so really around the world. We operate one of the world's most extensive and technologically sophisticated SAR networks, providing support for government agencies, as well as our oil and gas customers. We operate day and night in all weather conditions. CHC has a significant SAR presence in Norway, where we provide all weather SAR coverage for the Norwegian Ministry of Justice and several of our oil and gas customers. As many of you are likely aware, on March 23rd, the Viking Sky Cruise Liner issued a Mayday distress signal after losing power during a brutal storm off the coast of Norway, stranding nearly 1,400 people aboard their, crew, their liner. The engine trouble occurred in a stretch of sea known for rough, frigid waters dotted with reefs and small islands that posed a major threat to the safety of the passengers. Et experts have explained that the situation was critical and highly unpredictable. The ship was floundering in waters only 13 meters or 42 feet deep. If the, shoes, if the ship's crew had failed to restart the engines and the stop the ship from drifting, it could be pushed onto the rocks, suffer hull breaches, or possibly sink. Due to the severity of the storm and the high seas, lifeboats were not an option to evacuate the passengers, and other boats in the area were unable to help due to the dangers of moving passengers from ship to ship. What started out as a normal day quickly turned to something entirely unexpected when we received the call from the Norwegian National Rescue Service. When our crews arrived on the scene minutes later, the situation proved to be even more dramatic than they had imagined. Let's take a closer look with the video.
Thank you. Just a little bit more about the rescue. We deployed six heavy aircraft to execute this operation. Two all-weather search and rescue Sikorsky S-92s and two all-weather SAR Airbus 332s were the primary rescue aircraft for the mission. The Royal Norwegian Air Force deployed two Sea King rescue helicopters. In addition to the four primary rescue aircraft, we scrambled a third S-92 to ferry additional crews to the site to help manage crew fatigue and place an additional S-92 on medevac standby to cover for one of the aircraft engaged in the rescue. Our team handled the challenges of such a large complex rescue in close collaboration with the Norwegian National Rescue Service, the Ministry of Justice, and our customer Equinor. The scope, complexity, and magnitude of the Viking Sky Rescue alone was stunning. After 21 total flights, the team airlifted 460 people to safety, operating through the night over an 18-hour operation in treacherous weather conditions. However, the rescue became even more complicated when the Haglin Captain cargo ship was caught in the storm in rough waters nearby. The ship lost all engine power, and due to the ship's movement, obstacles on the deck, and the angle that it was listing on its side, the ship's crew actually had to jump into the sea one by one to be rescued. We diverted one of our aircraft from the Viking Sky to pick up the six crew members, and a Sea King picked up the remaining three. What are the odds of two ships being disabled in the same location on the same day at the same time? Allow me to share some data points so that you can have some context. In 2018, CHC SAR teams in Australia, Norway, and Ireland flew upwards of 1,600 SAR and EMS missions. Applying simple math, that's an average of over just four missions in a day around the globe. Compare that to 21 flights in a compressed 18-hour window amid 25-foot waves and gale force winds. This is what our SAR crews trained to do and uh, on, on a moment's notice. This outcome was only possible because of the extraordinary skill and dedication of our crews, maintenance and support personnel, including many who volunteered their personal time to help. Without a doubt, our greatest strength is our people and our experienced, um, talented and committed team uh, of, who are trained to the highest industry standards are really the difference makers and the true embodiment of excellence where it counts. But I'm not here just to tell the story of a remarkable rescue. I'm here to share what this extraordinary operation has taught us and how we can apply these lessons learned across our operations through Heli Offshore, we can all apply to make our industry even safer. As we considered this mission at all levels within CHC, we landed on a few key points that are applicable for today's discussion. And I want to focus on four of the most significant takeaways. The first one, operating a single global management system allowed our team to work together safely during a non-routine scenario. Key to CHC's approach is the use of a single global safety management system that routinely identifies and addresses non-compliance events. We also operate using the same global standards wherever we fly. Our common systems and standards allow us to work collaboratively and transfer knowledge and best practices around the globe while decreasing error rates and implementing changes consistently. Our standards also allow us to scale up our operations safely and reliable. With the Viking Sky Rescue, this capacity to learn anywhere and apply everywhere supported the team's ability to operate seamlessly with confidence during a scenario that was well outside the routine mission exposure. This mission brought together six crews from four bases serving both government and oil and gas customers. Relying on their training and procedures, more than 30 professionals were able to work together safely despite the unusual scale and pace of the operation. Quite simply, investment in standards matters. The second lesson learned. The significant SAR capability contracted in Norway helped ensure the effectiveness of this operation 
having all weather SAR capabilities for oil and gas allowed our fully trained crews to engage safely in a, rescued, in a rescue of unexpected scope and complexity. As many of you know, the customer's contractual requirements during the le determine the level of SAR support, whether that's level one, two, or some limb SAR. Our level one all-weather SAR aircraft are equipped for day, night, land, boat, and open water rescues, and are crewed by two pilots, a qualified hoist operator, and a qualified rescue person. In this case, the all-weather SAR capabilities contracted by Equinor in Norway allowed our fully trained crews to engage safely in the rescue operation alongside our CHC crews under contract with the Norwegian Ministry of Justice. According to the Rescue Center in Norway, the high level of offshore SAR helicopters means that Norway is better prepared for rescue at sea than most other comparable countries in terms of the length of their coastlines. Investment in capabilities pays off. If we were unable to deploy our oil and gas dedicated aircraft, or, we, or if we were contracted at our lower level of SAR support, then we would have been unable to provide the same level of response to the Viking sky, and the rescue would have taken considerably longer. So I'd like to extend our thanks to Equinor for their cooperation and support. Our third lesson learned is we flew our aircraft in non-routine roles, which means our crews needed reliable technology to stay in position and get the job done. The best people become even more effective when they are equipped with innovative technology. The advanced safety features of all-weather SAR aircraft provided enormous advantage in search and rescue missions where every second counts. Many of these systems reduce crew workload, enhance situational awareness, and increase the likelihood of successful rescues in the most demanding missions or conditions. For example, the four-axis auto hover system allow our pilots to maintain the stability necessary to fly with precision. And our floor thermal imaging systems helped our teams with increased situational awareness. And the dual rescue hoists were invaluable. We put our, our Goodrich hoist through 176 cycles and our Breeze hoist through 133 cycles during the rescue. That is roughly two months worth of cycles over the course of the mission. On the ground, we relied on ISAR and AIMS to help us effectively and efficiently manage our aircraft, our crew member rest, and the operation. ISAR is a CHC-developed SAR management tool that monitors, measures, and collects all activities within a SAR operation, and AIMS is our airline information management system, which is our planning program that consolidates our crew management and it provides for automated crew assignments, travel, training, and cost management, operations control, and much more. So the bottom line is investment in technology is critical. Our fourth lesson is we completed this complex mission because our people were ready. This is partially because we encouraged them to step outside of simulators and sterile training environments. Our flight crews have extensive operational experience and continuously hone their skills through rigorous live training as well as simulator training across many disciplines, including aircraft positioning, simulated rescues, and medical treatment in all manner of SAR environments. We maintain proficiency through extensive regular and recurrent training sessions in all conditions, such as overnight, uh, over water and live boat hoists. The complex and fast-moving nature of the rescue operation with the addition of the cargo vessel emergency really highlights the need for multiple agencies to conduct joint training to allow them to react in the way that they did. So there really is no substitute for investment in this kind of training. As we are only a few weeks out from the major mission, we're in the process of finalizing a full debrief of the Norway rescue. Consistent with the collective focus of all Heli Offshore members, safety through collaboration, we will share our detailed, detailed lessons learned with the newly formed Heli Offshore SAR Working Group with the hope that our experience will benefit SAR crews throughout the world. 
We can all be very proud of what we have accomplished together since the founding of Heli Offshore, and personally, I am excited about how we can advance our goals with these new working groups. In closing, the kind of investment in all-weather SAR capabilities, real-world training and common standards made all the difference in safely executing the Viking Sky and Hagelin Captain Rescue in Norway. This underscores the need to maintain a collective focus on the financial health of a sustainable helicopter services segment so that all of us may continue to invest in the kind of capabilities that elevate the levels of safety and allow us all to provide this critical service for the short and the long term. Together, we share the ambition of continuous improvement in rotor wing safety and the operational integrity and it's never more true than as we emerge from this prolonged downturn. We cannot shy away from this responsibility. Thank you. Thank you.